Alright guys, so what is up and welcome back to the channel. So I have done a previous video regarding to how to become a seasonal driver for UPS and ultimately kind of describing on how to become a UPS driver in general. Now this is concerning the brown trucks. Now those of you that have the CDL or the actual truck drivers, uh, because that is a whole different ball game, they have different rules and different regulations. So this is based on my experience with the specific actual driver. Now what I have in front of me and you guys are seeing right now are the 5 and 10s. Uh, this is something that a lot of you have been asking about in regards to the previous videos, whether or not this is something that you guys have to learn before you go take the actual driver test, uh, whether this is something that's going to be very difficult to learn and things like that. So I'm going to go over it very um, quickly for you guys, kind of reading over every single steps and really explaining to you guys how simple this is. Uh, I understand uh, kind of memorizing every aspect of it is not easy. Um, but this is something that everyone does on a daily, specifically if you have a driver's license. So if you have a driver's license, you do this on a very pretty much daily basis, or at least I hope you do, because otherwise you'll be looking at a car crash very soon in some aspects. So in some cases, doing these things are something you do on a daily basis. It really comes down to saying it out loud, because whenever you take the driver test, you will be reciting these things out loud, whether it is by kind of describing what you're uh, looking at, whether it is describing what you're seeing, the distance that you have between you and the car in front of you. But without further ado, let's dive right into it. We're gonna start with the, uh, with the fives here on the left hand side, which ultimately talk about seeing uh, habits. So this is pretty much describing what you see, what your eyes are looking at. And this is really what you guys are gonna be mostly interacting with throughout your test. Everything else on the tens is more of like the spacing and how you drive the vehicle. But let's start with the actual seeing and visibility as aspect of things. So aim high in the steering wheel. Now this is kind of just describing because you are very high up on the on this vehicle. It's pretty much describing how you should be looking ahead. You should be always be looking kind of a little, few cars ahead of you in order for you to figure out what's the best or safest path in a sense. So it, pretty much it says how do you do it, imaginary target, baseball, t uh, dartboard or whatnot. So kind of just centering the vehicle in, in a sense. But you really, sh it's also kind of keeping a, an eye on the vehicle in front of you. Because you're so high up that you, you should be able to see everything in front of you. Um, so what does it do for you? Center the car in traffic and a safe path to turn. So like I said, pretty much keeps you ahead of, uh, ahead of the curve in a sense, keeping kind of an, a long distance view. So this, the second one would be, which is get the big picture. This is kind of goes in, all of these guys go hand in hand with each other. Hey, my high on the steering wheel will keep the vehicle pretty much nice and straight and centered on the, the actual lane, but will also keep you safe by kind of keeping two or three car in front of you view of the actual um, traffic. Now get the big picture is pretty much how do you do it is how wide and how deep. What is it? It's an object and ground. So this kind of just gives you, uh, a, you have to kind of get a visual of uh, how wide the, the field of view is and how deep or how far away your actual objective is. So what does it do for you? Keep you away from billboards, smooth stops and turns and by time. So this is the same thing as I uh, told you, always look about two or three car lengths ahead of you because you're so high up, you can see everything. Um, so this, get the big picture, is ultimately letting you kind of view ahead of you and see how wide and how deep you need to be in order for you to brake right on time and not slam on your brakes with all the packages that are in the back of the truck just slams up to the front. And then you're gonna have to fix the mess. So the third one, which is keep your eyes moving. This is realistically something that not everyone does when you actually drive on a daily basis. The reason why is because some people get distracted by phones, some people get distracted by just, you know, the kids in the back seat and things like that. So this is something you will have to do on the actual test which is how do you do it? Move your eyes front two seconds, rear five seconds, five to eight seconds. Um, but this is also something you will have to describe as you do it. Whenever you're driving the vehicle and you will be taking the test, you're gonna be saying, um, checking left mirror, checking um, rear camera, because you will be having a camera, you will not have a, a rear, um, a glass or um, mirror in a sense. But you'll be looking pretty much left, checking left mirrors, clear, clear, clear interception, checking rear camera, clear, checking right mirror, clear, and things like that. So you'll be doing that rotating as you go. This is something that's a little bit, as you go a little bit more, I will describe a bit more. But this is pretty much saying that you need to keep your eyes moving every two seconds. You need to look at a different location. Leaving yourself and out. Now this is something that not everyone does either. Um, a lot of you guys actually are you know, tailgating and things like that. So this is something that realistically speaking, you will have to do with a UPS truck. 
you are being GPS tracked, you will have people that will follow you, which is technically your supervisor, they will see how you drive because people will be able to report you if you drive any sort of recklessly. So leave yourself for now, meaning keep a safe distance between you and the car in front of you. So how do you do it properly? Have an escape route, have to take a path of least resistance. So in this case, is if somebody slams on the brake and brake check you for whatever reason, you need to always have an exit in a sense. So it's the same thing if you ride a motorcycle. Like I ride a motorcycle, you need to have some sort of safe path in case somebody slams on the brake in front of you, you either swerve left or you either swerve right, or in that most cases, you just kind of stand fast, but you have a safe distance between you and the car in front of you, so you should be perfectly fine. Um, so what does it do for you? Uh, spaces on all four sides, but always in front. So this is the biggest one, is always keep a safe space in front of you, specifically, in this case, we're gonna be going over it, which is about 30 feet. Um, number uh, five, which is gonna be, make sure they, they see you. So, you are in a giant brown truck. Yes, but like I said, a lot of people are distracted by their phones, a lot of people are distracted by their kids, a lot of people are just don't give a crap. They really don't. So you need to make sure that people see you. So use your uh, horn, use your light and turn signals and things like that that will communicate with the other driver, hey, I'm turning here, or hey, I'm going here, or hey, watch out, I'm right here. It has happened to me. I'm, I'm, I was in a, in a big brown truck pretty much, and it has happened to me where somebody cut three lanes of traffic just to take the exit on the far hand side and I had to slam on my brakes. So, uh, thankfully, the guy behind me was actually, you know, had over 30 feet in distance between me and, and him. So he didn't hit my back. But I, it gives me enough perspective because I knew he was coming. I just saw him swerving in and out of traffic and I was like, this guy's gonna cut me off going into this exit, I guarantee you. Long to behold, he just cut right through. So always have an out pretty much and always make sure that everybody sees you. So, you know, as soon as that happened, I put my hazard lights on saying, you know, giving the car behind me a warning, okay, something's happening. And the guy's just, you know, slam right through me, right, right through in front of me. I managed to slam on my brakes, the guy behind me slammed on his brakes, so he saw me. So make sure they see you at all times. So that's pretty much it for the actual uh, five scene habits. As you guys, I'm gonna assume a little bit more right here for you guys if you're gonna wanna take a quick picture of it. Um, now, this is all something you will be going through in the classes. It's not something that your guys are not gonna learn. If you are taking the test before you learn these things, don't worry too much about it. You do it on a daily basis. You don't have to recite it word for word if you haven't learned these things. But if you did learn these things, you most likely this is not what you're gonna have to recite word for word. This is something that you just have to know because you should be doing this while driving for UPS. All right guys, so at this point, we're gonna be going for the tents. Um, so at, and for this one, it's gonna be the tent spaces and visibility. This is ultimately how you should be driving your car or in this case, the truck. Um, if you're not doing this on a daily basis, even while you're driving your vehicle, you should definitely consider learning them and applying them for them for yourself, really. I apply this on a daily basis when I'm driving my, uh, my bike or when I'm driving my car. This is will save, uh, will save your life and will save a lot of people's you know hard-earned money in most aspects. So if you guys, this is something that you will most likely need to uh, memorize, specifically when you take the test, you will need to recite the, t the tens. The five, not so much, because the five is just something that is just for you to know and kind of moving the eyes around, you know, keeping a safe distance between the car in front of you, because you don't have to learn this whole paragraph in, in, the, t in the fives. In the tens, you will need to learn all these specific things. So if you guys want to take a quick pictures of it, uh, this is the first one right here. They're not going to be in order when you recite them. Most likely you can recite as you go so this is doesn't all have to be in order um, but I will go in order for now and then I will kind of describe to you as I learn it or pretty much as I um, recite them to you I'm not going to read the entire paragraph but I will give you kind of a brief understanding on what it really means uh, based on my experience and things that have happened and by me doing applying these things save my my truck and pretty much save my life in some cases so starting with the first one, which is clearing interceptions. So in this case, is um, this is really for, mostly for pedestrians. You are in a big truck. You don't technically, sometimes you have a lot of blind spot in that truck. You don't really see all pedestrians. But before you actually get to a specific interception, you want to start uh, by putting on your turn signal, obviously letting the car behind you and the car to left and right know that you're turning there, so you're going to start slowing down. 
But the next thing, you also want to look at bicycles, motorcycles, and really pedestrians. Those are the three that you really don't usually see as a human being whenever you're driving because they're not something that you pay attention to naturally. You're used to seeing a big uh, 5,000 pound truck or a car or anything else that's on the road that has four wheels. So whenever you're turning, it has with the big brown trucks that has a specific blind spot on the right hand side of it because you're gonna be on left hand side driving it for those of you in the US and not in UK. Um, so for those of you in the US and Canada and things like that, you'll be on the left hand side. The right hand side is a blind spot for pedestrians and bikes. Um, so you always wanna check the right mirrors and really the um, right side of the pole of the truck because you wanna make sure that you see a pedestrians and before you take the turn. It has happened with people or you know, homeless people and things like that just walk across the street and just jaywalk. So always clear your interceptions, make sure that it you know, pretty much keep pedestrians alive. This also means that whenever you're going through an interception, which is the four uh, lights, you want to make sure that the cars on the that they have the red lights are actually stopped. It has happened to me where literally I'm pulling out of the a green light. I have the green lights and I'm pulling out, and there's a car that just runs the red lights and just swerve right in front of me. I gotta slam on my brakes. There's no signaling anybody there at that point. It's just good luck to the guy behind me type of thing. But it does happen. So that's why I always say it's clear your interception whenever you're going off on a green light and you're the front car or the front vehicle. Always make sure the guy, the, the guys on the left hand side and the right hand side are following the rules of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the streets and ultimately are stopped at the red lights. And also that there's no you know, pedestrians on the road that you're turning onto or that you're driving through. For the second one, which is stopped in traffic. Now, this is something that um, not everyone does, specifically if you drive a car. I sometimes don't even do it when I drive in the car. I do it on a motorcycle, not in the car, which is always leave enough space between you and the front of the car in front of you. Now, usually you want to leave an entire car length in order for you to, uh, in case you get hit from behind, you don't hit the car in front of you. Um, UPS does this obviously for uh, insurance purposes and also to kind of save their vehicle from frontal damage and rear damage if somebody you know hits them from behind. Um, so always make sure that you leave at least an entire car length between you and the car in front of you if you're driving a UPS truck. If you don't do this on a daily basis with your car is understandable because people just will swerve into your lane whenever they want. Uh, but if you're on a motorcycle, you definitely want to leave that uh, space in between in case, you know, the guy behind you doesn't see you and runs you over, you know, you don't end up getting squashed between two cars. But that's no here, no there. Uh, so yeah, stop in traffic, always leave one car, uh, car land between the car in front of you and yourself. Uh, so number three, count one, two, three, after vehicle ahead has started moving. Now, this is something that, um, is necessary in some aspect because people will start moving and then they will slam on their brakes. Um, but thankfully you're in a big truck so you can see what's going on two or three cars ahead of you uh, before that even happens. Uh, so, but you always do still want to count one, two, three uh, and then go. The biggest reason for counting the one, two, threes is spacing. Um, what does spacing do to you? It ultimately gives you enough time so whenever the, the traffic is already moving for you to stop at that point afterwards. So always make sure you count one, two, three and then just move forward. All right, so the next one is gonna be four and six seconds following time for the speed up to 30 miles per hour, six to eight seconds for the speed up to over 30 miles per hour. Now, this is something that every single one of you should be doing on a daily basis. I understand we live in Phoenix, for those of us in Phoenix, and everybody drives 90 miles per hour and does whatever the hell they want. But at the end of the day, you still wanna follow certain rules in order for you to prevent car accidents. Uh, and this, you know, if obviously you're taking this job, you have a pretty good record when it comes down to crashes and things like that. So you should be fine following this rule. Uh, but long story short, if you are within 30 miles per hour and below, you want to leave about four to six seconds. And how exactly do you identify the seconds is ultimately by realizing where your the vehicle in front of you is um, and then mark for example as the vehicle pass a light pole on the right hand side count how many seconds it takes you to get to that pole so uh, for example um, you know I'm driving down the interception or driving down the road and the car in front of me passes a pole on the right hand side I count one Mississippi two Mississippi three Mississippi all the way up to four and then I'm, I'm doing good if I'm going up to 30 miles per hour 
anything past 30 miles per hour, I usually keep anywhere between six to seven seconds. Um, you don't need to, you know, have a whole mile in front of you, but you know, it just kind of helps you stay safe in most cases. The UPS trucks have great brakes. The only thing with the brakes is each time you slam on the brakes, all the packages you have in the rear are not secured, they will move forward. So if you have to slam on your brakes for whatever reason, chances are all the packages that were nice and neat and stored in a specific order are now all over the place. So good luck figuring where everything goes. So the next one is going to be 8 to 12 seconds at lead time. So this is pretty much the same thing that I described to you, um, pretty much saying that you need to have um, figuring out how far away or um, ahead of you you need to pay attention to. Um, whenever I, I spoke in the previous, when it comes down to the fives, you always want to keep, you know, two, three car length in front of you of just kind of paying attention to when those guys start to slow down, when those guys are turning or have turn signals to go right, left, right, you know, whatever they decide to do, because it helps you kind of keep your safe distance between the car in front of you and really have, um, you can do preventing maneuvers in some aspects and, you know, prepare for what's going to happen in the, in the future. Like I said, that car that was swerving in and out of traffic on the left hand side of me, I knew was going to cut me off because I kept the eye lead time. So you always want to be two or three car lengths uh, or two or three car ahead of you paying attention to that in order for you to be proficient at what you need to do. So for those of you that want to take a picture of that, because I know it's not the uh, clearest, it's going to be right here. All right, the next one is going to be scanning the steering wheel. Now this is mostly useful for whenever cars are stopped. So if you see a car and you're driving down the road, for example, in downtown Phoenix area, uh, and you see a bunch of cars parked uh, parallel on the right hand side of you, you always want to make sure that there's nobody in that vehicle. So how do you do it is by scanning steering wheel. What it, sometimes you might not be able to see the actual individual within the vehicle uh, because you know how low their vehicle is, but that's why they say that you need to scan the steering wheel because you will be on the left hand side of the vehicle, so you should be able to kind of realistically look inside the vehicle on the right hand side. I understand the tense, don't overthink it. It's very simple. Just look in at the wheels and look at their actual steering wheel. Um, because what you want to see is hands. If you don't see any hands in that vehicle, you're fine. If you see hands in there or if you see a face going like this, it most likely means that they're about to pull out and might not see you. In some cases, the biggest thing with this is people that just like to open the door, not paying attention to anything, and then you end up hitting and just clipping the doors off. It's not going to be your fault and most likely it's going to be theirs because they should pay attention to the incoming traffic, but you still want to avoid to have an accident irregardless. So scanning steering wheel will save your life and also whenever you ride a motorcycle or a bicycle on the road. So this is something that is used on a daily basis. It's just something that's realistic, but you also will need to learn this word for word in most cases when reciting and actually taking the test. The next one is going to be stale green light. Now, stale green light is something that everyone should be paying attention to, whether you're driving a motorcycle, a car, or the big UPS trucks. Um, this is very self-explanatory. It means that if you've been, you know, you're coming onto a light and the light's been green for a very long time, you can expect it to go orange anytime by the time you get there. So you either have to figure out whether you want to speed up, slow down, or whether or not you're just going to push through. Um, most likely if you are on the big brown trucks and um, you already going through the interception, it turns uh, orange right when you're about, I don't know, about 10 feet away from the green, from the line, you obviously don't want to slam on your brakes. One, you might be able to stop speed if you're going 30 miles per hour to the line, but all the packages in the back is going to just come to the front. Um, so th the best thing to do is just go through and just, you know, finish what you need to do. But if you are far enough and you have enough distance for you to stop at an orange light, don't do like you do on your car where you do zero to 60 at that point and just take the orange lights. That would be a big no-no and no-go when it comes down to UPS. So what, you see, when it, when it comes down to stale green lights, what it means is you see a stale green light start slowing down. Start taking a step back and prepare to brake. So it kind of gives you enough time to, whenever the light turns orange, just stop at the, at the actual line. Um, so, you know, it gives time for the guy behind you to slow down as well so he doesn't slam into you because you slammed on your brake at the last possible second or an orange light. They cannot see you pass you because you're a massive thing. So if they cannot see you pass you, they're not going to be able to prepare for the red light like you are. Um, so that's why I said, take it with a grain of salt, Most, mostly with this specific tense, what you want to do is as soon as you see a stale green light, 
take your foot off the accelerator and start slowing down. All right, um, eye contact. So what does eye contact mean? So this biggest thing right here is part of the, also the ones that we talked about, which is clear your interception, is you always, always, always want to make eye contact with the pedestrians and bicycle and motorcycles. Um, the biggest thing, you might not be able to see the motorcycles, you know, um, face because of the helmet, but um, in most cases, pedestrian and bicyclists are the biggest ones. The reason why is because you might drive a giant brown trucks, but some pedestrians don't give a crap. They will just walk through. So you want to make sure that they see you looking at them. Um, so they, you know, might, you know, assume that you're not going to stop or they might think, okay, he's going to stop. Um, if you don't see their eyeballs and you, you know, believe they're just going to cross in front of you, slow down more than you need to just to kind of prevent an accident and hurting anybody. Bicyclists, we all know. You know, so when it comes down to bicyclists, just be careful, do what you need to do, make sure you see them and have them see you. If they don't see you, they're just gonna keep going and just take that little uh, pedestrian thing or, um, you know, go onto the bike lane even though you're turning right. And, you know, your, your, your right s uh, signal is green and <laughs> theirs is not. So just be careful, make sure you do eye contact with all three of these guys and you should be good. All right, so pulling from curves. So this is more related to whenever you guys are dropping off a package and are uh, realistically just kind of swerving on back to the traffic. Or uh, for example, if you're downtown Phoenix or downtown whatever city you're in, you wanna make sure that you're able to pull through the curve using the right things. The first one is obviously gonna be using your mirrors. Uh, you wanna make sure that there's no upcoming traffic coming in behind you. Uh, you wanna make sure you turn off your hazard lights. You wanna make sure you put your left hand side signal if you're turning left uh, and pulling off the curve on the left hand side. Um, so you want to make sure that you do all three of those things because if you don't communicate with the traffic either through horn, lights, uh, or signal, they're not going to see you and you're going to be at fault if they hit you. So you want to make sure that pulling off um, curbs, you want to just use all three of the things. Turn signal, you look over as well, make sure you see their eyeballs as they're driving past or whether they're you know, coming up to you with this bicyclist, pedestrian, whatever it is. You need to make sure you look at them as much as they look at you. Now I understand sometimes it's not very convenient for you to go like this and look out the truck, but if you're able to do it, um, the biggest thing is your turn signal, horn if you have to use it, and uh, really just using your mirrors properly. All right, so the last one is gonna be use your mirrors and gauges. So this is something that not everyone does it. Um, it might not be you, because obviously if you're doing the UPS or are planning to work for UPS, you either have a really good record uh, driving wise, or you know, you're good when it comes down to all these things. But you always wanna make sure in, within the UPS truck that you use you know, all, all of the things that is provided to you. So your mirrors and gauges are extremely important. So like I said before, whenever you're driving, you always wanna spend two seconds on left mirror, two seconds on the rear camera, two seconds on the right mirror, then you two seconds on the steering wheel, making sure that your vehicle is centered. What I mean by steering wheel is you wanna look past your steering wheel, make sure your, your vehicle is centered to the vehicle in front of you. And then you wanna look at your gauges, your speed, um, and then, you know, anything else like, you know, uh, your, your engine heat and things like that, which is not particularly necessary, but I like to look at things, I'm a car guy. But yeah, so look at the gauges that you have, make sure that you are within the speed limits and not going 45 into 35 or, you know, 45 into 25. Uh, things like that that are very simple and self-explanatory, which is, you know, mirrors and gauges, and you're gonna be repeating all those things whenever you take the exam. Um, after you already, you're gonna go through all this when I go to the class, but once you go take the actual driving exam, that is something you will need to do and describe as you do it. Um, so now we're done with the five and 10, as you guys can see, that was the last one. Um, but going into the actual exam, you're gonna be reciting and describing what you're looking at. So what does that mean by that? You're gonna be doing, you're gonna be in the driver's seat, you're gonna be saying uh, left mirror clear, um, right mirror clear, rear camera clear, you're gonna be speed limit is this. Uh, I am currently center of the lane, pretty much steering wheel centered. And you're gonna keep doing that over and over and keep saying that over and over and over and over. That's really what you're gonna be repeating left and right. And then when you come down to an interception, you're gonna be you know, uh, left mirror clear, rear camera clear, stopping at the uh, two, one car length in front of me with the vehicle in front of me. So those are things you're gonna be describing as you're taking the test. 
that's what the actual um, supervisor, whoever's taking the, the exam with you, is going to be annotating you on. Is you, they want to know that you know all your nines and tens. Or, I'm sorry, all your fives and tens. Um, pretty much describing everything you have learned throughout this thing, and really just describing it word for word. If you practice this on your own in your own vehicle, because you do all those things naturally, you should be fine. Um, in some cases, like for me, I didn't have to recite this word for word because whenever I took the test, I initially just went on the road, I did a full lap that showed that I, I could actually drive the vehicle, and then he was like, all right, let's stop right here. At this point, this is your exam officially started. You're gonna be you know, describing everything you look at and how you look at it. And at that point, I broke down every single one of these things and described, you know, I lead time, this, uh, vehicle in front of me, seconds are this. Um, you know, looking at left mirror, looking at uh, gauges, looking at rear camera, looking at right mirror, pedestrians on right hand side, uh, eye contact completed, and things like that. You have to describe everything just naturally, in a sense. If you do it on your vehicle on your own, it's gonna sound stupid, but just do it for one day before you take the exam and you should be good to go. I really hope this video helped you guys out. I know it's extremely lengthy, but if you guys can help me out and if you watch until the very end, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for more. Uh, I will be not doing, any, probably not anything else related to UPS, but we'll be doing other things like for corporate America and things like that. If you're interested, hit the thumbs up, hit the like, and I really appreciate you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.